Are meal times a serious struggle? Does your child eat a limited number of foods? Does your child eliminate entire food groups? Are you tired of waiting for them to just grow out of it? Welcome to How to Unpicky Your Picky Eater, where you'll learn strategies to help your picky eater expand their palate. With Christine Marati Yoder, a pediatric feeding specialist, speech pathologist, mom of a child with feeding issues, and author of Mealtime Mindset. Let's get started. Here's Christine. Welcome, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. We have a special guest, Jill Weissman from Beyond the Bib, and I'm so excited to have her chat with us and listen to all of her amazing knowledge about how to make our food more nutrient dense. Um, She is the founder of Beyond the Bib, which is located on Long Island, but they ship all over. So um, her amazing tasty foods um, are incredible and our kids love them. And um, so that's kind of what we're going to chat about today. Welcome, Jill. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So how did you get started making these like great nutrient dense foods that kids really love? Yeah. So about four years ago, we were starting solids with my daughter and she kind of had all the typical first foods, you know, fruits and vegetables. And we were ready to have her take the next step and add more textures and more flavors to her meals. And I was so excited to start making, you know, one big family meal for all of us. And my husband and I use a lot of sauces in our cooking. We're busy working parents and sauces are just awesome shortcuts to making a full, well-rounded meal. Um, And I was, you know, looking at the sauces that we were using and we're pretty health conscious people, but even the sauces we were using had a ton of ingredients that I had to start Googling and researching and and seeing if it was really something my 10 month old could eat, you know. Uh, how much salt can my baby have? What is gargum? What exactly is in natural flavors? Can my toddler have exanthem gum? And in doing that research, I realized that a lot of the ingredients that you find in traditional sauces are really there for functional purposes, not nutrient purposes. So to make it thicker, to to make it last longer on the shelf. And I was just really um uneased with the fact that my you know little one who was just starting to eat all all the foods that i loved like had to have these additives in there that i just didn't know if it was the best for her so my husband and i started making our own sauces and we took out you know we didn't add in any of the ingredients that you would find in the grocery sauces and then we also just added in a ton of vegetables so instead of adding gums to make a sauce thicker we added cauliflower and, um, you know, looked at sourcing ingredients that didn't have any uh, additional ingredients in it. So coconut milk typically has gums in it. So we sourced, you know, coconut milk that was only truly made of coconut. Um, and in doing so, we found that she was loving, you know, trying these new flavors. And we were loving being able to make really fast meals for her uh, after a busy day at work. So that's how Beyond the Bib was born. And we launched with some of our flavor, favorite flavors that we love as adults. So a tomato sauce, barbecue sauce, and a green coconut, which is like a Thai curry. And started sharing it with friends and family. And, uh, you know, kids that were refusing protein or were really not interested in coming to the table for meals were actually starting to engage with their meals because of having these sauces and adding that kind of like, interaction engagement with the meal. So we knew we were onto something. And a couple of years later, we're we're now going strong and shipping nationwide. That's really amazing. I love that story. And that's, I feel like how a lot of great businesses get started is like, you see a problem and you find a way to fix it. Right. And it's true. There are so many ingredients and, and, you know, ingredients that like, we don't even think about, like you said, like, the gums like there's so many gums in so many things um and they really don't have to be there and like you said they don't hold any nutrient you know properties of them so why not replace that with something nutrient dense right so that's like something I'm always talking to parents about it's just like you know making our meals more nutrient dense like um replacing 
or just adding those ingredients. Like um, one thing I always do is I add um, like carrots and zucchini, like grated mm -hmm. into our uh, sauces or into our um, um, eggs, like omelets and stuff. Um, and it's really about like changing your perspective of, of how you make that dish, right? Because like you probably didn't always add all of those vegetables. You probably were doing that for your kid's benefit, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. It was just such a no brainer that I can like essentially beef up the recipe right. by adding in these vegetables and like nobody would be the wiser, right? And it's not, it's not about hidden vegetables. I know that's like a very trendy thing now, you know, adding these hidden vegetables. And I'm very clear with my daughter and now my son who has, you know, started solids that, I'm not trying to hide anything. You know, these are the ingredients we're using. There are vegetables in here, but they can be there in a very harmless way and either not really affect the taste or again, just give it a nutrient boost mm -hmm. um, to make the meal work that much harder for us without too much effort. Right, right. Because it, it really isn't about sneaking them in because it, it's about changing the way the recipe, really. Mm -hmm. It's about like, okay, well, this is how we make our eggs or this is how we make our tomato sauce. Like we make it with vegetables and tomato sauce is a tomato is a vegetable, right? But it's okay. We're going to add the three vegetables in this tomato sauce, right? Exactly. So I love, it's just a perspective shift, I think. And mm -hmm. do you have your kids ever help you like making food in the kitchen? Yes. And that was also one of the light bulb moments that why I thought, you know, sauces was really this like gateway into just like a happy kitchen is that I was able to have my daughter help with the prep. So from telling her, you know, go to the refrigerator and get out the carrots or having her wash it or, you know, watching me peel. And eventually once she was trustworthy, I got her a toddler knife um, and she was really able to like get involved in it. It kind of led to her wanting to try new foods that she normally wouldn't have been interested in because I was offering it to her in a very non-pressure way. They were just they were just there. They were on the cutting board, right? I wasn't saying, you know, have one more bite of the carrot. They were just a part of the activity. And right. I think that really led a really nice like foundation for her to see the kitchen as a place of activity and fun and bonding as opposed to like, oh no, I have to stop what I'm doing, you know, in the living room and having fun and playing to go eat a meal. Like it just became another fun activity for the day. I love, I love how you put that. Like it became a fun activity, a fun bonding activity. Um, and that's what we want. We want kids to like, like our food, like not just because we want them to eat, but because we want them to like it. Like food is great. Right. I mean, I personally love eating food, <laughs> um, you know, and it's probably, uh, it's so much easier when you're all at the table eating the same oh, meal. Definitely. Yes, I know that, you know, sometimes with kids it's challenging and they want to have kind of their own separate meal. And just the thought of like doubling the amount of pots and pans <laughs> is enough for me to be like, you know what, like, let's let's try to get creative with how we can make that one family meal. Because um, it's a lot of work. And, you know, for working parents or even stay at home parents, like the the day enough is is stressful and you're just trying to keep the household running and then by the time you get to dinner or cooking lunch like that shouldn't be an added stressor um so we really found sauces to be a great way to again like make parents lives easier for cooking as a shortcut but also have the kids get involved with like the dipping aspect of it or just having that little bowl on the side is enough to intrigue them like hey what is this maybe i want to dip this food in it and like kind of see what it's all about yeah and actually well, i tried when i was trying them out with my son that's how we started we were just dipping chips in the barbecue sauce because honestly barbecue sauce is something he's never been interested in trying before uh, and I've tried many times, you know, we have it on the table. I've made it, I've bought it. We've been out to restaurants and it was there. Right. So I've introduced it many times, but, um, having it in the jar and saying like, oh, let's use it as a chip dip. All of a sudden that like perspective mm -hmm. shift, he was like, oh, well, if it's going to be for the chips, then yeah, <laughs> sure. He tried right. no problem. And he loved your barbecue sauce. Oh, yeah. And it is, and when you say beyond the bib, it really is beyond. It's like, I think maybe even people thinking, hearing the word bib might think, oh, it's for kids, but 
I actually was finding myself just eating the barbecue <laughs> sauce on one of the burgers that we had made. And I was like, thinking like, this is not for him. Like, this is for me too. Like, yeah. I want this. It's so um, good. It's so, and I'm so glad to hear that, like that you kind of created that, that bonding moment with him where you both could share in that kind of activity and eating. And yeah, I mean, the beauty of our sauce is like all the ingredients they're they're just real wholesome ingredients. Like there's no restriction for any age or any diet. Right. And, um, I think that's kind of also been the fun part of creating these sauces. It's just like thinking of all the different ways that families can use them, whether it's just for dipping and having like, a, you know, a fun snack along, you know, when you're out or having it be like a full meal. Um, it's been, it's been fun thinking of all the different scenarios of how people can use them. Yeah, absolutely. That's, it's wonderful. And you know what, there's something to be said for having those foods in um, like actually eating the the whole foods, like you said, your ingredients are made with whole foods. And I think some people assume that, well, okay, they're not getting that food normally. So I'll just give them this supplement. And, you know, I, but I think there really is, you know, I think if, if we were meant to be only eating supplements, that's what would be on the earth, right? I think the foods are here and they were divinely designed to give us what we need. And I think supplements sometimes are a little overused. I mm -hmm. think they're wonderful and they have their place. And don't get me wrong, I use them all the time. But I don't think there's like a replacement for how the chemistry of how those nutrients work within the food to give you everything you need. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to hear that because you're not only thinking like, when you're looking at our ingredient list, right, to your point, you see all the whole foods that you would want in a diet, but really what we're here to, to kind of show everybody is that we our sauces should be a part of the larger meal so that you're still getting the protein and your complex carbs or whatever other food groups you need to have like a full rounded meal. Like we, we want to encourage it to be a part of the meal, not just a simple, you know, like it's not a baby food where you're just scooping it in from a, you know the spoon to the mouth. It, it should be a part of the larger picture um, so that, you know, everybody's getting a well-balanced meal. Yeah. Yeah. And that's true as well that, you know, it, it is, it's like, it's meant to be used with other foods as well. But, um, but just, you know, that having those, the supplements, you know, I, I think pe some people think, um, well, it's okay if I like don't eat any vegetables today. I'll just take my multivitamin, you know? And it's like, no, the vegetables are, it is, it's an important part. Like it should be a part of your day. And I love that you're able to get those in, in such a fun, easy way mm -hmm. that yeah. it's not like an extra thing. Like, it's mm -hmm. not like, well, okay, I'm going to put carrots on the plate and peas and chicken and like all of the things but it's like no 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 it's just a lot of those things are just in the sauce already so right. it's just like one less thing for parents to think about and worry about it's like all the good stuff is in the sauce and you just have to put it on your pasta or your meat or your tofu or whatever and you know and then you can have that like it's mm -hmm. so awesome yeah thank you thank you i do find that to your point about supplements like i think in our society right everybody is in a rush and always on to the next thing. And maybe sometimes people are leaning on supplements to just like quickly get what they think that they need. Um, but if we could just, you know, slow down a little bit and be more intentional with what we're putting into our bodies, um, in the long run, it just sets up, you know, healthy habits that will become a part of our day to day and it won't seem like an added burden. We will yeah. need to rely on those supplements. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Like making it part of your routine or your, your process or your recipe to just have all of those nutrients in it from, from the get go. Mm -hmm. I think that's really big deal. Um, but I, I love that. And do you guys have plans to make more, like, are there going to be more sauces or are you going to go beyond sauces and do other things? Like what is your vision for beyond the bib? So we definitely have new flavors planned in the works. We are very, um, intentional about, you know, working with our community and, and finding out what people are 
you know, having success with their kids. So a lot of kids out there love dipping with other kinds of condiments like ranch um, or a honey mustard. So we're looking into all the different kind of condiments that, again, are really well received by kids and families, but could could be made better, could be made healthier, could be made more nutrient dense. So for this upcoming year, we're going to be you know, doing a lot of recipe testing and we don't launch any flavors that haven't been tested and kid approved uh, by even the most selective eaters. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a tall order to try to fill, um, but we're, we're working on it. And I think um, sauces are definitely the, the focus uh, because of that aspect of the home cooking and creating those, um, you know, important family meal moments. So we'd like to really focus on that aspect of it, but we're excited to see the flavors that you know we can put out there and and make more happy mealtime moments for everybody. I love that. That's so exciting. I and I think that's a really good thought. See, I thought you were gonna say like pesto or something because my, as an Italian, that's where my mind goes. Is like okay, next is a pesto sauce. There's a green a green sauce and a red sauce. Um, no, but I love like ranch is so popular and honey mustard. Like I like when you said those, I was like, oh, I'd love to try those. That's a good idea. <laughs> if somebody once said to me like, um, you know, meet meet your child where they're at. Like I, I keep hearing that meet your child where they're at. So in my mind, I, and I tried to do that with my kids, you know, where are we having success and can I tweak it in a way that works for me too? So if I'm hearing, you know, I'm hearing a lot of parents are saying, you know, my kids love a ranch, they love honey mustard. I want to see like, you know, challenge accepted. Can we meet them where the kids are at, where they're already enjoying food and just make it better, make it healthier, make it more acceptable um, in your mind as a parent. So that's, that's where I, I think we're headed, but love um, certainly I love a good pesto. Cannot, <laughs> cannot like, I think, I don't think we go like a month without making something with pesto, even just like on a little toast with an egg. It's delicious. Um, <laughs> agree, so agree. That in mind. Um, yeah, no, but I think, and dips seem to be the way to go for kids too. Kids love dipping. Just, I mean, I think humans love dipping. I mean, if you go to a party and there's no dip, wouldn't you be disappointed? Yeah. Like, it's just like, a party perfect, like finger food. Like, you know, you don't want to be like at a party, like eating like a, a hamburger in your hand, right? You just want like something that's like a quick bite. So yeah, I think there's yeah. something about a dip that people um, just like gravitate towards. And again, I think it's, it makes it fun for our kids. Yeah, a novel about it, especially if you put it in a cool bowl, they like cannot resist like a fun bowl or like different shapes or different colors. So that, that's worked really well in my house as well. Yes. And a tip that I, um, I had just actually posted on Instagram that I had tried, um, with my son is just using different, um, vegetables as spoons for dipping. So it's like, cause sometimes the dip is all you want. And it's like, okay, this chip is just the vessel to get mm -hmm. this. Like for me, it's like guacamole. I'm like, all right, <laughs> yeah. I'll take another chip, but it's really just so I can get more guacamole and not scoop it with my hands or with a spoon. <laughs> but if you use like, um, like a veggie stick, like just um, and there's no pressure to eat it because it's then a utensil. It's mm -hmm. a great way for kids to practice getting vegetables literally into their mouth without the pressure of having to take the bite of it. Mm -hmm. That's so a great that's tip. Just a re regular mom tip to mom, you know, <laughs> mom to mom tip. Yeah, um, that's a great tip. And like, I bet you can switch it up in so many different ways, whether it's like a bell pepper as the spoon or a carrot, like you can always switch it up. And I, I think kids also appreciate that, like surprise and delight, you know, like they never know what they're going to get. So that, that's a really fun tip. Yeah. It's like, well, today you're using your orange shovel or your, <laughs> your green one or your red one. Right. Um, so yeah, I love that, but you have like the perfect food to do that with. And I was thinking, you know, um, we made, um, I put like a little pizza together on just like a piece slice of bread with your, the tomato sauce. Um, but I was thinking, you know, a lot of times when you think of a jar of sauce, you think of, okay, well, I'm going to use that to make pizza or to put on pasta, but I think you can use it as a dip. Like, I think you could almost use it as a salsa. Like if it's cold, then it almost is like that salsa consistency. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we do like little pizza roll type things um, and we can dip that. That's a, Then it becomes a dip. So you could, I feel like you can use it, um, 
you know, not just as a sauce for, you know, your mm -hmm. protein or for your pasta, but you can just use it as a dip anyway to try to make it more fun. Like if that's like where your kids are at, then use it as a dip, not right. as on pasta, right? Yeah. And I love that idea of like making, you know, turning something into something else. So like making a salsa, like, you know, if you could just add, maybe add a little bit of cilantro and a little bit of lime juice then. And again, like having your child help with that transformation, like then you, you, you just made a whole new meal out of, out of something. And I think in, in today's economy where right, everybody's trying to just be a little more creative with how they're spending money and, and what they're using in the kitchen. That's a really cool way of kind of like, you know, again, being creative um, with different types of, of items. So I love that. Yeah. So now where can people buy all of these yummy things that you make? <laughs> so we are currently selling from beyondthebib.com. So we ship nationwide and we also do uh, local delivery on Long Island. So people can check us out at beyondthebib.com. We also sell on Amazon. So for everybody, you know, all the moms who's placing multiple Amazon orders a day, if you're anything like me, um, you can get us on Amazon. And we are also on some other online retail markets like Bubble Goods. Um, but the website and Amazon are like really great, easy ways. Um, we typically will ship next day. It'll get to you super fast. And uh, yeah, definitely please check us out. And we'd love to offer um, a discount for your community. So Foodology 10 will get your community 10% off their entire order. Oh, that's amazing. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, I really hope everyone gives it a try. And you have like a, a variety pack too, is right? So they can yeah. actually try all three that you exactly. offer. Exactly, yeah. So you can check us out on the website. You can either build your own three pack um, and choose, you know, two tomatoes and a green coconut, or you can do um, three of all the same or the sampler pack, which would be the tomato, the barbecue and the green coconut. And again, it's just a great way to, have your family try new different flavors, knowing that the ingredients are, you know, anything that you would already have in your kitchen, nothing questionable, and tons of those extra veggies that typically aren't found in the sauces. So the variety pack is an excellent choice to try us out. That's awesome. And, um, you know, I forgot to ask, and I was going to ask, um, how many like different vegetables would you say, or different, um, like ingredients do you use in, or like, is each one like, you know, like, I don't know, like maybe like three to four different vegetables. Like what can parents expect? Um, yeah. So our tomato sauce has six different veggies in it. So that one is like, that's the heavy hitter. It's carrots, uh, zucchini, red bell, pe red bell pepper. Um, our barbecue sauce has spinach and butternut squash. And oh, carrots. my God. You'd never know that. You would never, you would know. never and, know that. It tastes it's so good. Like, <laughs> such a no brainer. I'm like, why, like, why wouldn't we put, you know, these, delicious veggies in there. Um, and then our coconut has cauliflower and green bell, green bell pepper and fresh basil. So it ranges anywhere between like four to six extra veggies into each sauce. Um, wow. And then that doesn't even include like the fresh herbs and spices. So which is um, so important. Not, yeah, not dried, like it's just it's really the freshest of ingredients. Um, and then, you know, we're able to, to have extra fruits and veggies in there by using the natural preservatives. So we use lime juice and lemon juice um, instead of artificial preservatives. So there's even more from, from that sense. So um, yeah, wow, you're definitely getting a lot of bang for your buck in our sauces. Oh, for sure. I mean, even if parents had to individually prepare each of those things, like you already saved, like probably like at least 30 to 45 minutes of time, at least. Yes, exactly. Um, Just even from shopping and, and then sauteing, like we did all the hard work for everybody and it's just like packaged nicely in a little jar. Yeah. And in like a tasty jar, like, so I, it's like, if, like you said, it's seriously a no brainer. Like, why would you not make the, the most of like, if they're already eating barbecue sauce, why wouldn't you have them eat the barbecue sauce that already has three to four veggies in it? Like, it just doesn't make any sense not to. Yeah. <laughs> so I, know, uh, I keep waiting. I'm like, is somebody else going to do this? Cause this is such a good idea, but yeah. it's, it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun and we're really excited to see what, you know, the next year brings for us. Oh, well, I think you're going to do amazing because they are tasty as, as all, as anything. I mean, I, I love them. I love it over 
like store brands. So for sure. And those don't have any veggies in them. So right. like, why would I ever buy those? <laughs> You know, you. So it just doesn't make any sense not to get them. So parents definitely 100% give this a try. You have really nothing to lose because it is delicious and your kids will probably love it. And I, your family will love it. It's like, it's just a no brainer, guys. So Foodology 10, you can get 10% off too. So definitely you have to just try it. Um, thank you so much, Jill. Was there anything uh, that you wanted to share that we didn't talk about? I don't think so. I just want to say thank you to to all your work and to your community. Um, it takes it really does take a village to you know raise children, and I think feeding is such a significant part of raising children. And all the work that you do um, really helps everybody to get through it. So thank you. Oh, you are so welcome. All right, and if you uh, need this, we are going to have the links below on YouTube and in our podcast episode notes, so you can find the links to beyond the bib there as well and of course if you need our help foodologyfeeding.com and uh, we will see you again next week thank you for listening to how to unpicky your picky eater to learn more about achieving your child's feeding goals check out christine's website at foodologyfeeding.com and be sure to tune in next time to how to unpicky your picky eater